All right, guys, welcome back to the channel. As you can see, we have a special guest today. We're here with KG. We're going to discuss gaming. This guy, he streams games, uh, NFT games, crypto games. And the games are now blowing up. Axie Infinity blowing up. All kinds of NFT uh, gameplay uh, features are right now becoming mainstream. So good to have you here. And please tell us how you started with this and uh, which games you like uh, so we can get into that as well. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, first things first, thank you for having me here. I appreciate it. I've been watching your channel, like I told you before the show. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan, big fan, and I look up to you in terms of how to engage with the community and how to do videos in the gaming side. But yeah, um, to answer your question, number one, I started gaming like four or five years ago on Twitch. And I, you know, I, I kept gaming and then I was in crypto, but I wasn't in the gaming side. I always knew yeah, gaming yeah. was going to be part of crypto, but I always thought it was going to be tokens type of thing. Like, oh, a marketplace where you, you know, you pay in crypto. You know, I always saw it that way until crypto kitties came around, didn't really get into it, didn't really see it as a game per se, um, and didn't get into it. But then 2020 comes around, I'm getting burned out, you know, gaming <laughs> on Twitch. And I'm like, look, I need to pivot. I need to find something new that I love doing. And I need to be happy. So I started looking into crypto games and they were so like on the low. There was nothing. Axie Infinity was there. Some other game called Lost Relics as well on Engine. A few others, very, very rough games. And I was like, this is this is it. Oh, okay, yeah. Okay. Right, right. It was a, a, the light bulb moment. And, you know, just a year, I've been mean, a year and a half, maybe something like that, just straight up doing content almost every single day. I pull out a video and I try to be careful with the games that I explore because um, the games get very complex, right? Um, there's a lot of things to it, the team behind it, whether, you know, is it going to be something that is hard to achieve? Um, and I'm not a programmer. So if I even had that background of programming, um, I would probably ask better questions as well which is mm. something I want to look into it and probably going to use your channel for that. Yeah. <laughs> so, so what kind of games do you play? Maybe we can show on the screen some of the top <laughs> games that, that you like right now. I guess Axie is one of them. And I we, have it, yeah. And, and we can show people what it is because I think many people are following and they're seeing, you know, number go up and the, the NFTs going up, everything going up, but they don't really know how it works and, and what the, the actual gameplay is. So I think that's quite interesting. Mm -hmm. so, let me do that right now. Um, let me see if I can find the screen. One second. Let me share it right here. Uh, share one window. Okay. This, uh, this is my email. Let me take it out. All right. Now we're good. Yeah, don't dox yourself. Ah, I'm already dox, man. <laughs> I'm already at the point. It's very hard. I'm sure you're very good at that. But can you see? Uh, yes, yes. Okay. Perfect. All right. So before we start, I just want to let you know that um, this game is brand new and they have an egg reserve for you. And I want to go into that later on. Okay. okay. It's something <laughs> very interesting in terms of like what they did here. But let's start with this right away. Um, this is a timeline for me in my per perspective. NFT games timeline. Um, we are in early, early um, in the early stages of we're in the early stages of gaming. Um, so right now, uh, we're like late 1990s or early 2000s. So yeah, this yeah. is going to go in an exponential growth. And this is how I see it. This is not factual. It's just how I see things. So 2020, we proved that gaming is a future. That's where we actually proved it. Like, okay, there's something here. 2021, more native games will start building. And that's what we're doing right now. There's a lot of little games coming out. Uh, a lot of them with big visions. More fully developed games will be in the market in 2022. There's a lot of games that are coming out in 2022. In 2023, th AAA studios like Epic Games, um, you know, the, four, the people that did Fortnite, EA Games, they will uh, realize that they're kind of behind, right? They're yeah, going to be yeah. like, wait, holy crap. And then on 2024, AAA studios will be like, okay, we need to build. So that's basically the timeline. And I think um, we are, that's where we are right now. Um, so we're very early, just to keep that in mind as we explore the games. 
Okay. Yeah, and in many cases, people don't recognize things before they become big. So, like you say, early gaming in the 1990s, it wasn't serious industry. There were people at home building some games. You didn't have millions and millions of dollars put into them. And then it gets more and more adoption and becomes more serious. So it's probably like you say, right now it's mostly crypto projects, small projects. They do start themselves. Some of them become bigger than others, but it's not very corporatized at this at this point. Exchanges are very corporate now. You see Coinbase going public, Binance, it's, it's corporations. But mm -hmm. gaming is still in this indie, spa, in, indie phase in crypto. It's indie games mostly. Exactly, exactly. And it's a huge opportunity, right? Um, like Jihos from Axie Infinity, the growth lead, one of the founders said once like a year ago in a tweet, he said, new kings are going to be in town. And the same thing is happening with exchanges. These are the new banks. You know, new kings yes. are in town, period. You know, the banks are now going to have to deal with the exchanges and unite, you know, or else, in my opinion, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, yeah. So anyways, um, the first you want me to go into games. Uh, yeah, let, let's quick. show some gameplay, how you actually, you know, pl play it and what is the process? OK, OK. So, yeah, for the gameplay right now with Axie Infinity, the, the issue is that the game blew up in a uh, exponentially we have 500,000 plus players and the servers are not working well so it's not good to show gameplay right now but i can uh give you an overview of the ho the whole perspective of axie so people understand why there's 500,000 people right now and they have generated more fees than ethereum and bitcoin yeah, crazy. Crazy. right so it, it's just insane right um and people might think like oh it's just you know some crazy thing. No, people got to understand the perspective. So if you want me, I could go into that sure. real quick. Yeah. All right. So first things first, we already talked about the fees and all of that is blowing up, you know? Um, so it's going crazy. And now the reason it's going crazy is because Axie Infinity, in Axie Infinity, you can earn money. You can earn this token. This token um, has a utility in the market. The utility is that you can actually breed Axies. As you can see right here, we got axes in the market and you can actually go through the axes and see the DNA. So it actually takes a lot of skill to breed an axe. So when you pair two axes together, um, it's actually um, asking you to burn this SOP token that you actually earn by grinding. I don't like playing the game personally, but I do yeah. like breeding. So I pay for people's time for the people that grind. Yeah, so that's where, and, and that's what I read. People in Philippines and other country, uh, parts of the world, where they uh, uh, grind, kind of like people from Venezuela grind in RuneScape. Because I, I, I come from RuneScape uh, as a kid. I played a lot, and so there you have a lot of people from developing nations grinding, and then um, you have kids and you know uh, other players just buying gold and the different uh, other items in game that are difficult to get. So I kind of see it like mining. You know, someone has to mine Bitcoin, so you have these miners grinding the machines in bitcoin but in axie you have the uh, love potions but they need to be grinded out somehow and that's why you can actually go to work like you say you can go to work in crypt in crypto you can be uh, like employed <laughs> for many no, people yeah, there, there's many employment. people full-time crypto like you said hey you know full-time crypto there's a lot of people that are full-time crypto Full on axie infinity exactly so uh, what yeah. is grinding is, is does the yeah. server work can, can you show us uh, what they grind like what these people do every day what kind of grinding is it yeah okay so let's actually jump in into a video that you know let's just jump into a video because the service right now they're they're working on it so okay um so let me actually show you a video of how the grinding works okay um so here we go uh, what we do here is okay. So you go into the into the game, right? Um, you either have adventure mode or you have arena mode. Um, in adventure mode is uh, PVE, so you can earn a hundred SLP every single day. So that is SLP is at thirty cents. How much is that? Like thirty dollars every single day. Now for people in Philippines, Venezuela, all these places, thirty dollars a day is a lot of cash. A lot of cash. Yes. Um. So. You could do adventure mode and then you got arena mode. Now, the trick part with arena mode is that you actually need energy to, to get into arena mode. You start with, I think it's like um, 20 energy or 10 energy uh, if you have three axes. And then that way it stops people from actually farming, like, you know, mm -hmm. just clicking and farming and, and botting, right? So once you run out of energy, it regenerates over time and then you could go back in. 
right? So that's a mechanism so that people don't actually um, flood the market with SLP. Now, SLP does get burned when you when you breed. And that is why the SLP is going up because the actual output of SLP as you uh, battle is actually less, right, than, than the burning rate right now. So that's why SLP is going up. Um, so it. people are breeding a lot. So... Um, if we go right here, you can see it's a card game. You you play your cards um, and the strategy behind it. A little bit of luck as well. That's how card games work, right? Um, and then each axi has a different uh, kind of type. Right here, we have a, a plant. Uh, plants are good for, for health. Then we got a, a bird. Low health, a very fast speed, meaning that they go, they go first usually before any attacker, any other axi. So they have a high speed and they have high damage, but they're easy to kill. So usually you want to put them in the back, right? So that the actual plant takes all the damage. Right, um, right. <clears throat> so you start like, you know, theory crafting with all this kind of axes and being like, okay, should I put this one in the front? And then you start breeding based on your theory craft. Of mm. course, there's uh, streamers out there that are playing every single day that are really, really, really good. Um, and they theory craft all the time. So it does take a lot of money to to be at the top, right? But that's why scholarships right. are coming in. So yeah, so I do the uh, love. I I I do. I farm love potions. I can breed this uh, axis, and then I fight. Is there any land? Can I own land also, or uh, how does that work? I uh, I was right there before we did this. And I wanted to show you that because people are not understanding what land play is. Um, we did a demo back in December fourth. Um, so just imagine it's an, an, an MMO. It's just an MMO and you can farm. Um, the same principle is going to apply. Now we're farming SLP. It's a one way type of thing, right? You farm, you use it to breed and that's pretty much it. That's where the economy is. But imagine this taken into a bigger scale. Now I'm farming wood. Now I'm farming stone. Yeah, yeah, now yeah, I'm far yeah. Right. And now I need all of that to build on top of my land, right? I could build shops. Um, you see, I have my inventory right here. Um, this is my land right here, right? You could build uh, different things are going to be, this is like demo. And I'm pretty sure they have, you know, progress in this um, land play a lot already because this is like a lot of months ago. So, and you can see other people right here. Um, I was hanging out with other people. Let me see if I can find it right here. Look at that. We lined up, you know? Mm, nice 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 yeah so, I, I mean as long as they make it fun because that's what many crypto games do it wrong they think just because there, it's an nft is going to be fun but nfts by themselves are not fun it's a lot of psychology it's a lot of this risk reward like you say there is in battle there is a bit of luck there is a bit of strategy and uh, all all game all game fun at the end there has to be risk reward you know i do this i risk it but i, I can win something else so that's uh, that's huge, and obviously it's working because the adoption is big. So now that we know Axie and people, I think understand why the simple love potion is uh, mooning because people want to breed these things more, and now there's so, so much demand. Um, let's move to some others, maybe. What kind of other games do you play uh, in crypto? Uh, yeah, uh, we can move into the the second one. I think is innovating at a, at a, at the next level that also kind of started a year ago and you know i think you had them in your show as well avagachi yeah i had them today uh, actually yeah, yeah exactly you had them today <laughs> so yeah avagachi um maybe we shouldn't go too deep into that since you already have a video on that but basically i have a few avagachis right here and uh let me see am i on polygon my avagachis yeah i'm probably not on polygon what okay uh the wrong address sorry about that um all right, so I have four Avogachis right here, and these Avogachis are powered by um, interest uh, yield bearing tokens from Aave, right? So you inject them with, with these tokens, and basically you have a savings account with your little pet. And then it's pretty cool because you can have uh, millions of dollars inside this pet, um, earning some type of passive income. And then you can go play and give it to your kid. Be like, hey, yo, um, you know, go play some mini games, yeah. right? You got, you got snakes, Pac Man. And of course, they're going to have land play. Just like I showed you in Axie, they're going to have the same thing, 
right? But with with their own world. So that's Avagachi in a nutshell, basically. Um, yeah. So when when they uh, explained Avagachi, it got me thinking about Club Penguin. I don't know if you played it. Absolutely. Uh, yeah. So it, because it's kind of the same that you have a bunch of mini games and you you, you have a house. Uh, this guy's probably also gonna add that you you can own land. So it's um, yeah, it's kind of similar in that sense that it is kind of a, a Club Penguin, but for crypto. And I see Absolutely. they have some that's plans land. for. Yeah, that's land. Nice, nice, nice. That's the land, and these are the plots, and um, we can see a little bit of the of how it's gonna look, and yeah, it, it, it's it very, very interesting, right? Um, especially the fact that it's it's a first um, game that is actually def a DeFi game, like truly a DeFi game, because actually actually pushed you to use DeFi by selling SLP on Uniswap or whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. But this one is a DeFi integrated you know nft like it's yeah. injected with DeFi tokens and and, and this this is on polygon which is amazing and axie I, obviously axie is huge it's maybe the biggest game but what i don't really like as much is that you cannot build on top as you know polygon developer or ethereum developer because they roll their own layer to solution uh, and it's working very nice for them because that's what people care about they care they don't care about you know particular technology that it runs on they just want to play the game but i think long term if we're thinking a bit long term where it's interoperable if I have a game and I can build it on Avagotchi, but it's going to be a bit more difficult for Axie. So it's going to be interesting to see how they, maybe they make uh, their own solution, which is uh, running network more developer open that I can run and know they and will. I can build. So that would be they amazing. Will. Yeah, they have to if do we, it. I actually have it right here. Um, so their idea is to, they have a, their idea is to bring player owned economies into their uh, running network, right? So they already mm -hmm. have the sauce. They already know how to do it. Many of these games are scared of doing player owned economies because it's not that easy. This is pure economics, right? How how do you you know, make it fun, but at the same time have a nice economy that works? Yeah, so they've yeah. been, you know, so they want to bring other games and they will bring other projects into, they will open it up, of course. But the idea behind this, which is very smart, is like, okay, we got the liquidity of players. Now, any project that wants to come into running, this is going to be very, very valuable, right? Imagine Uniswap on, on the running network or, exactly, or exactly. right? So, but, but they have the liquidity of players. So they're on top right now in, in yes. terms of like, you know, they, they're in the top of the A, they're in the A game right now. Um, and of course, they're going to build their decks as well. If you can see right here, um, swap in, on top of their wallet. But yeah, I do agree with you. Right now, it's close to them. Yeah, that's awesome if they can achieve that. But like you said, at the end, it's the players that matter. And when they have the players, they can add more things. Their blockchain has more users than uh, probably most blockchains <laughs> combined <laughs> daily users. So that, exactly. that makes sense. But they have to open it up more. Uh, so that's good to hear that they're going to do that. Uh, well, what else? What else? Do you have uh, some, you know, more niche, uh, niche unknown uh, games like uh, yeah. people haven't heard about uh, that are not in specifically into crypto gaming? Um. Yeah. Um. This one I just found out about uh, the other day, um, and the reason I'm talking about it so much, and I even tagged you, and you know I'm trolling. It's just it's a it's a fun it's a fun um, idea. This game is it has ten thousand eggs. Then you're gonna be able to crack them open, but each egg is tied to a land. Um, and actually, they have a minimum viable product right here where you can actually go and and kind of test it out. And imagine you um, walking around right here with your pet in the back. Uh, you're going to be able to build your LAN, um, hang your NFTs that are on your wallet right now. Um, and this game is called Crypto Beast. So I'm I'm very bullish on this game. And the reason I am, and I'm not like chilling here, like, oh, yo, go buy or whatever. Um, it's because it, it's a simple game, but it has a fun community. And you asked me earlier, how do I, how do I find games? The first thing I do is... Is it a game that is viable? Is it is it doable? Right? Yeah, yeah. Let's like let's be honest. Is it doable or not? Right? This one seems very doable. Then I go into the Discord. I talk to the devs. Then I go into the community. How does the community feel about it? Is it a toxic community? Is it a community that is a trolley community? It, right? Like I, I I I get a sense of of every angle. And of course, if I had the programming uh, background, that would be even better. So if you have a programming background and you're watching this, these are things that you you could put together few pieces together and kind of um, make an assessment of whether the game is something that is doable, right? Um, so that's how I go about games. And right here, you got the 10,000 lands and basically um, it's going to be a fun game where you can battle other players in the land. Like you can go to an, a player and kind of request to battle him 
on the spot, right? Mm, nice, nice. Yeah, yeah. well, uh, I think, like you also said before we started, you got to be careful because also there are going to be many people that come into the space and they see, oh, NFTs are hot. Let now sell a bunch of land. You know, you can buy a lot. We have a new universe. You, you have seen Axis universe. We're also going to do universe. You, you can buy our land. So how do you, uh, except for what we said, have you seen some examples of, of um, recently of games that are here not for the long term? Like, is, is it becoming more, would you say, now? that people see that games are blowing up because when something is popular you see a lot of people come in just to you know do a quick cash grab yeah you know that i haven't experienced that myself and i take pride in that because i'm very very careful <clears throat> i would say with all honesty right here that crypto beast i went in very carefully right and yeah, I, yeah. i started getting a, a sense of the of the of the project now i don't recommend that you go ape in but yeah. when i got in it was point one for an egg and a land and then all the components around it that i told you about that i made an assessment i was like point one if so, you know that's not that risky versus the reward that it could be right in the future yeah, yeah. um but some games start like maybe 0.5 ethereum one ethereum and yes there are those games out there but i'm very very careful very extremely careful uh, i can make a mistake for sure um it's it's very um it's very hard but yeah there's a lot of games coming out saying like we're gonna do this we're gonna do that we're gonna do this and you're like okay sure dude right um <laughs> yeah 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 so Perfect. imagine this game like stardew valley um so we got examples that's another thing you want to look into how can you relate this to the traditional world of gaming is it ha has it been done if it has been done it's actually better you don't want something that hasn't been done necessarily um because it's way more risky. So if you look at Habbo Hotel, Club mm, Penguin yeah, as yeah, well, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? Exactly, exactly. So you, you start making these connections, right? Um, yeah, you want me to keep going? I got many games. Yeah, yeah let, let's continue. But I agree that it's like with all coins. If, if an all coin is completely crazy, nobody knows anything like the idea, they don't recognize, they're not, they're not gonna buy it. But if they, if they can quick, uh, clearly see this has been done before and this has most importantly mooned before, uh, that it's, it's more chance that it's going to be successful. But so before we move on, how do you make money in this? Is it that you buy NFTs, you buy some fungible things like uh, uh, SLP because it's a token? What would you say is um, easiest? Because the, the danger I think people see with buying NFT is that how will you sell it? Like there's not a, you need to find a specific buyer for that NFT. While if it's a token like uh, Love Potion and Axie, you know that there is a market. It's uh, You can sell it, probably there's going to be many people that buy it. So how do you see it? What what's more um, profitable? Um, it depends. It depends. Like I sold an Axie land the other day, and today actually I sold a, a, a sandbox. The sandbox, another game, another big one. Um, you know, I bought it. That's why I'm saying risk. The risk that you can take personally versus the upside potential that you might see based on everything. Um, that i told you right all the components of the community vision is it doable is it not if you have programming background all that comes together yeah. and right and it helps you now another thing that helps you is data data is very very important for an efficient market in any right in any um game in any token um so you actually go to open c and you could go to activities so i could be here let's say um Let's say let's stick to this one, which is new. This is the, the crypto beast. I think this is a good um, and be careful that if you're gonna buy this, buy uh, go through the link in the in the website. But I already know this is the right one. So you can see that things are selling, right? Things are selling. Um, 33 minutes, 41 minutes ago, mm -hmm. an hour ago, right? So you want to do that as well. You want to look at data. You want to look how fast are they selling? Um, what types are they selling? So you want to dig in very, very deep. For me personally, I make money in in a few flips, right? In a few flips here and there. But I usually don't sell that much actually because my brother and I have like a, a company together and he focuses on DeFi. He's like a DeFi guru, right? Mm -hmm. So... Um, I have funds to fund my 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 project, which is my YouTube. Um, I'm getting NFTs and all of that. So I don't sell that much. So I don't need to. I'm not in need of doing that. So I'm in a different position. But like I told you, I did sell a land, uh, a sandbox land that I bought for $40 one year ago. I was willing to risk that $40. And today I sold it for three ETH, right? Mm, so wow, you build yeah. a portfolio 
a long you build a long term portfolio, right? And then you get to a point where you have so many projects that you made good assessments with, and then you start flipping one or two. Yesterday, I sold the land in Axie Infinity as well that I bought for forty dollars at seven ETH, but it took me a year. It wasn't like, hey, here I'm rich from one day to the other one. No, you got to build a long term portfolio and you got to make the right assessments and you got to uh, uh, put your foot in the water just a little bit. Don't go insane. Don't go yeah, insane yeah. because that's how you get wrecked. So, and, yeah. and so how has this changed now during these bearish times? Bitcoin has dumped, ETH has dumped. Uh, NFTs actually seems to be doing better than ever. Uh, how, how do you feel the NFT space? Is it connected to Bitcoin in the same sense like all coins? Um, I don't think it is because it's, it's a very simple concept. NFT is a hedge against boredom. If you're bored, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you buy NFTs. And it doesn't matter if, of course, when the market is booming, you got um, big whales coming from the ETH network or the Bitcoin network transferring money um, into the ETH network and buying this stuff, right? Um, so there is more money going around. But when there's a bear market, there's always a there's always almost like a like a bull market in NFTs, no matter what, because it's fun. That's true, it's a yes. fun thing to do. Um, so if you're bored, you do this. And if you have a nine to five job, you just swipe your credit card right here on 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 uh, what's it called on MetaMask and you get ETH and you buy an NFT and you have fun. <laughs> exactly. <So> whatever. <laughs> yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right, so um, that's that's important to see that there is liquidity in the market that people are buying, selling these NFTs. Uh, let's move move on to some other games. You had some other uh, other ones as well. Yeah, absolutely. I want to go into another type of game. Okay, this is very interesting and a, a very interesting perspective here. Um, some games are are crypto natives games. They don't they are native and they don't leave that. They they they're not trying to go back. Yeah. Some yeah. games are hybrid. Right, Axie is not really a hybrid. They're a crypto game. Avagachi is a crypto game. Uh, crypto Beast is a crypto game. These are crypto games. Now you got a game like um, Amber Sword, which is a beautiful game with traditional developers, in which the only thing they're selling is the land. Now the key part here is the only thing that is an NFT is the land and the skins. Everything else within the world is like any other traditional game where the token is a virtual token inside the game where the devs have full control of it and you can never take it out. And if you try to sell outside, you get banned. Simple, right? Now, the key point of this game, and I'll show you some gameplay here in a second, is that the NFT market, the marketplace within their game in the future, what's going to do is that some of that revenue a portion of that revenue, and I have a video on that as well, explaining it, and there's a medium as well. Some of that revenue is distributed to the people that, that own lands, but the sales are only from skins, so there's no power weapons, okay? So, um, and it's a beautiful game. It's a beautiful game. So this is a hybrid. I would call it a hybrid. Um, as you can see right here, we can see a little bit of it. Let me see uh, if I play. Um, uh you see it's a traditional mmo yeah 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 it's very it's beautiful the devs are like 10 15 years um professionals in the industry well known um like people know who they are right like you can ask around anywhere and they'll they'll probably know who they are nice and nice. and yeah and they have a team of maybe 15 20 people so this is a this is a game that i would say if you buy a land or even if you don't buy a land play it right type of thing um got it, and, got it. The, and the lands are like 40 dollars here like the, the the so this is a i would say this is a good one this is like a secure one but it's not a full crypto game so you know but the, the yeah so i i see it's quite many people following uh, like i see on your account 125 uh, people follow this twitter account so is this 125 crypto people that that you are do you have mostly crypto do you follow mostly crypto people? Because then the, the only concern I have when a, a game is non fully crypto is will they have enough crypto activity? Will they be able to be seen in crypto? But if it is like that, like 125 people follow that, you know, then I would say it's, it's quite a big crypto audience. And uh, yeah, potentially it's uh, it's it's a good uh, project. Oh, no, it's huge. It's huge. There's a lot of um, I actually had a and maybe you should bring him in. Uh, later on, I think this would be a great interview. Um, let me see Amber Sword, Amber Sword, real quick right here. And you can see right here that I had a 
Uh, I'm so sorry about this. Let me go into no. Let me see. Ember sort. I had a interview with the founder, and if you want to get a perspective on on this, you can see that Ember sort in my channel has blown up. Like mm -hmm. um, nice, nice. You see twenty k. 5k right here um 34k so yeah there's a you can see the comments people are excited for this some people are a little bit more native they're like nah i want full crypto and some people are like oh, i'll do it um yeah, yeah yeah so there's hybrids so yeah there's enough people that's what i'm trying to say uh for for this type of games and i could give you another example of that as well right here yeah um this is big time these are from the same creators of decentraland fully crypto fully nft fully tokenized they decided to take a step back and be like okay we're going to build another game this one is going to be a hybrid as well so the only things you're going to find in the game are nft skins um and this is big time it's a multiplayer action rpg where you team up with your friends to adventure across time and space same concept as ember sword now this one doesn't even have revenue distribution at least ember sword has that right yeah yeah um so so there's going to be variations of this many variations of how this is not going to be a one solution type of thing um so that's how i i, you know, I have been seeing the space and, and the reason why personally i'm bullish on this whole nft thing is because i i don't know so much you know it's uh and that's a good sign because from the beginning when i entered crypto in 2013 it was mainly bitcoin but it's already at that point it started to go into litecoin and dogecoin and already at that point it was difficult to know everything then then eth came and eth completely blew up everything like it was you, you a whole that now it's two communities and, and different interests and then this whole defi thing and now the nft and like there are people and communities that i've never heard about and i'm here full time and and when i see that it's amazing because the, now crypto is so big that it's far beyond what you can really grasp as one person it's kind of like the internet you know from the beginning you knew all websites if you were early on the internet maybe it's like 200 websites you know the entire internet but in a few years it's millions and millions and then billions and trillions of websites there's no way you can know all of it so this is what we are experiencing now in crypto which is fascinating it's so huge man there are these communities like with the ones that you showed me it's, it's insane and it's very very bullish for crypto overall absolutely absolutely um uh, it's getting out of hand for me yeah yeah it's, yeah it's literally i can't handle it anymore yeah. um i used to be able i used to control the market right <laughs> like in my mind in my mind yeah, right like yeah, yeah okay i know what's going on here i know what's going on here but now it's fully gone wazoo out of the wazoo mm -hmm. you know like it, it's ballistic yeah, yeah. exactly yeah? so you got to be very careful as well again um for everybody out there and i can give you another example here sure um yeah. this is guild of guardians fully tokenized um it's going to be a mobile game so this is big because they're gonna this is probably the only game that is interesting enough that it's a mobile game other than axie right um that is a an rpg an action rpg you go into a dungeons with your friends and you can play from your phone right everything is going to be tokenized the weapons there's nice. going to be a token a governance token as well which is something that avagachi is doing the governance and it's working to the dot yeah the proposals in avagachi are working so we already seen that work and Guild of Garden is going to do it. Of course, Axie is going to implement it as well. Um, and I'll give you a little bit of gameplay here so you can see how it's going to look. It's, it looks like a fun game. Simple, fun game, right? You go with your friends. Um, you can own guilds. You can earn passive income through guilds, right? Mm, nice, because people got to nice, go to your nice. guild to craft. So you take a percentage out of that crafting. Mm. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah. So you got that. And then we got obviously games like this one another perspective here that are built on top of the bitcoin network or i guess the liquid network which you would know about about it a little bit more and mm. you know i'm not really an expert here uh, i don't know what you think about that but you know i have this game you can earn bitcoin um um not bitcoin um satoshis then you can withdraw it to your satoshis wallet um it's very minimum you don't want to you know it's this is all a game of incentives too much incentives, people exploit the game. Too yeah. little incentives, people don't play it. So you gotta tweak that those incentives as the as the game grows or whatever. So um, let, let's repeat what we said. We said Guild of Guardians, uh, Light Knight. So it's like Fortnite, but but on Bitcoin, I guess. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Axie, of course. We have uh, uh, we have the Avogadro. So which other ones did you show? Like Egg? What is that? Egg? Uh... Crypto Beast. 
Crypto Beast. I can, I can send you all this list if you want. Yeah, yeah, please send me. Please send me. I would love to I got you. With, I, the, with the guys. I, yeah. I, I got you. And I, I'll send you even more than this. I, I have a lot. I nice. Have a lot. Nice. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, I got you, man. Don't worry. Awesome. Um, of, of course, we got Sad Bible here. Survival game as well. Um, like, like Rust, if you played Rust before, or DayZ. Right, right. Yeah. And then they have their own marketplace, right? And then you got a big one, Star Atlas. Big, 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 big mm, vision yeah, on the yeah. Solana network, of course. Um, Michael Wagner is behind this. Um, this is a big vision. You got to be very careful with this. It doesn't matter how much money they have. Um, super, super big. What, what so, is this uh, game you know that? Is it Star Marine? Star? Yeah, I don't even know. You know, it's it's not crypto, but it's this. Star Citizen. Star Citizen. Exactly, exactly, exactly. Is that done or I remember like six years ago <laughs> I was following. It's like, it's like done, but not really. It's a massive game. And th this is where this is going. Um, and these people put a, a million, they raised millions of dollars, Star Citizen. Um, and, you know, like how do you how do you use those funds in a way that that makes sense, right? Um, those are triple A funds that they had like three hundred mil, two hundred mil, something like that. And Star Atlas, of course, does have the backup from FTX and Serum and you know Sam uh, uh, Beckman or whatever. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's money here. There's money here, but you still have to be careful. You gotta you gotta get in as the game progresses. That's how I do it. Put your foot in. If you don't see what you like, you pivot, you get out, right? So do that's how I go about things. Nice, um, nice. And the last one I'm going to show you right here is Aurori. Oh, Aurori, I don't even know how to say that. Uh, anyways, but this game is super interesting. This is Zelda meets Pokemon. So there's an adventure game that is very Zelda-like, but then you have pets that you could collect and then battle mm. in PvP. So I see uh, that one is also on Solana. In the have you used anything on Solana yet? Have you played? Or... Uh, I, I I bought NFTs on Solana, um, but it was very rough. It's very rough. Actually, I have the wallet right here. It should be the Solit wallet uh, somewhere around here. Yeah, it should be there. Okay, um, okay, okay. Yeah. yeah. So how do you and... see Solana? You think you think it's gonna be successful for NFTs? Is, does it look like that? Um, look, man. Here's what I think. Since I'm not a programmer, I don't give a damn. I don't give a damn, to be honest. Um, I think if the game is fun and there's people playing it, it's going to work, right? The whole idea, I think, behind games, that's why I told you at the beginning, oh, decentralized games are too complex. Mm -hmm. There's going to be a little things that are going to be decentralized, like maybe the token, um, a few things. But there, most of it is not going to be decentralized because it's very hard. It's a, it, it takes time. It takes time. And that's why I showed you like hybrid games. So if the game is fun, it doesn't matter in what blockchain it is, at least for me, at least for me. Um, I mean, if this game is super fun or Aurori, this one, which has beautiful art, if it's super fun, I'm going to go play it. And a lot of people are going to do the same thing, right? Um, so you tell me what do you think about Solana because you're the one that, that really, really can understand this at a at the core right well at the end of the day it's all about the user experience we ha we've had we have great tech in crypto all the time that doesn't get anywhere like for example i don't know if you uh, were here in 2017 when eos was big and eos was hyped like great tech great everything but no good wallet and still today there is no good wallet so nobody uses it it's horrible how they cannot get a good wallet and now i think it's a bit too late like the train has passed a long time ago now uh, people have moved to polygon but you know in 2018 there was a time where EOS was super hyped and they blew it completely because no wallet horrible experience so Solana uh, I feel it's kind of the same potentially let's see I, I'm, I'm bullish overall because I see a lot of people building things just like with EOS many people were building things but I keep hearing uh, over and over again that wallet is ugly wallet is bad and uh, uh, block explorer is, is too complicated so that's the only concern but let's see if they can fix the wallet and they have nice user tools it's, it's gonna be big no, no question about about that and i think no, they will yeah and for me as a developer it's not a problem to use the, the wallet or the tech but it, it just for the average uh, uh, user that's why i asked you like your experience with it but uh, yeah i guess if like you say if the, if the if the use case is good enough and there is also at the same time it's fun but also there's money to be made because the money will ensure that people go and explore it it's like people that don't have metamask 
they see all the gains in DeFi, they have to learn MetaMask, even though MetaMask... Is, <laughs> yeah, or you don't use Uniswap, but you see all the gains people make trading altcoins on Uniswap, you have to learn Uniswap. So it's going to be the same with Solana as well. If there's a big enough use case and incentive, people will learn. Uh, and that's that's what I hope for uh, for Solana. Yeah, this is what I see. This is the future of gaming, which some of the DeFi platforms haven't realized. You want Uniswap to be the place where people swap no matter what you want banker to be the place you want sushi.com you, you want those you guys have to build a game within your platform you build a full stack game that is fun to play not a little game little DeFi game no 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 you build a good game and then people are gonna come for the game and then they're gonna swap right there and even the people that are just bankers right <laughs> in the crypto world they're going to be like, oh, let me try the game. And they might yeah, get hooked. Yeah. <laughs> and we actually are seeing that. And I'll show you this. But I'm not. this one is still not uh, fully stacked. So it's like, okay, sorry. Sorry about this. Wait. Um, let me see. Why, do, why don't they have their website here? What the? Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah, this one I have seen so somewhere in yeah, Mobox. Mo Mobox. Let me see. No, wait. Sorry, sorry, sorry. It's Mobox.io. Okay. Let me just put it in. So Mobux.io is kind of a, a DeFi platform um, where it has games integrated and then you farm NFTs by, by providing liquidity and then you can play with those NFTs uh, within the games. But the games are just little games. They're not fun necessarily. This mm -hmm. one, I, I, I want to um, know more about it, but they don't want to tell me information, which is kind of like, bro, like, you know, Tell yeah, me yeah. and I'll do a video, you know, like, what's up? You know? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Got so, it, yeah. but this is the future of DeFi platforms. If you bring games, you you keep the money there. So, yeah. Very interesting, very interesting. Hey, bro, thanks a lot for uh, guesting here and, and explaining this to us. It's uh, very valuable, I think. And, um, and most importantly, this is uh, very important for people who want to get into this new industry and understand more. Even if you are in DeFi, you're not, most people are not in NFT games, that's the thing. They're not. Uh, they're not playing a lot, and the, and it's probably a lot of opportunity there that is untapped, like we have been discussing. And please send me the list of all games and even more so than than we discussed. I would love to reach the teams. If you also, if you can introduce me to the teams, it would be fantastic. Man, uh, I got you, man. You crazy? I, I put <laughs> you in contact with everybody. You, you bringing me into your into your YouTube and you being an inspiration and a teacher which is very, very important for this industry. No, no, I'm serious. Awesome, um, I took I took the approach in my YouTube channel to do to teach. You don't see me being like, I'm the best gamer, the best Axie player. I don't care about that anymore. I want to onboard people. I'll, I'll take care of that later. When we have good games, I'm like, yo, I'm the best at this game. You know? But right now, I want to teach people. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I want to teach them how to onboard. And I actually want to teach them the hard way, not the easy way. Because it actually sets... Um, it sets them up for success, right? When things are in trouble, oh my God, my my MetaMask, the, the thing didn't go through. <laughs> Whoa, yeah, cancel it. The nuance, the this, right? All of that things that are a little bit technical that maybe for us it's like super smooth now, but they need to go through that harsh, harshness. Exactly. Um, I, I think it's important. I think right now, for right now. Later on, yeah, we need super easy to onboard. But right now, I think it's important for people to go through that. Um, Exactly, yeah. exactly. And guys, uh, please check the link below and subscribe to KG and um, check out his channel. Very good channel, especially because it's niche. I like the, the, the niche content that you do because you don't see this on the other YouTube channels like, you know, that people normally watch. So I, it's very important that um, they discover you. And perfect, man. Thanks a lot. And uh, guys, see you all very, very soon. Uh, thank you.